fully functional our program, we have a special privilege of having a, a postal representative from Portugal, uh, incorporated as followed by divine instructions of action, specifically uh, Muhammad Tori. So once again, this is a religious and cultural-based organization for community outreach, which has been active in seeking solutions to a lot of the problems of gang violence and poor explored by the documentary that you've seen tonight. Uh, so without any further ado, Muhammad Tori. share a few words on the documentary just saying. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a, an excellent film and, and, and the brother uh, Bone or Clay should be commended. It's an excellent piece. Anyway, I need to say at the, at the onset, I'm not a former gang member. <laughs> um, you know, uh, however, I, I, I grew up in the culture. Um, my name is Muhammad Torrey, first of all. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, Compton and Inglewood. So again, I'm familiar with the culture. I had relatives who were pretty much on both sides of the color lines. So what you just seen in the film, I'm pretty much familiar with a lot of that. Actually, looking at that, it brought memories back in 92, right when they got riots. I was like 17. And it was real peace. It was real peace. We could walk down the streets and not have to worry about Watched our backs. We used to hang out on Crenshaw in Manchester, a little area on Sunday nights. It was a blood area where I grew up at. And the Crips pulled up one time, and we was like, you know, it's about to be on. And these guys got out and start tying red rags and blue rags. And it was just profound. I was 17, and it was just, it was just, it's a part of love. Anyway, what I really want to touch on this evening, the gang problem, right? You know, I believe like the son Yuka Shakur, aka Monster Cody, you all should try to really get people uh, of that caliber, people that came out of it, to really come before you and really give you the real insight on issues like this. But one thing that he said, the only gang experts are participants, people that came from it. You know, and that's the reality of the situation. The only one someone who who has gone through this and experienced it can really shed the proper light on this. What I intend to do is to really touch on the matter from, I think it's important that we put it in a historical, political, and social context. Basically, we're talking about a good portion of the African-American problems in particular, this gang problem. Most of these issues stem from the legacy of slavery in this country. Some of us may not want to accept that or understand that, but when you, when the people go through dehumanization, not being able to read and write and things like that, cut off from one's former self-culture, and then thrown out and, said, and told that you're free, and you have to be forced to come back to work for the same one who was enslaving you, it's pretty much, it's still, it's still, it's still servitude. And for those that know, uh, basically, the Civil War wasn't to end slavery, it was just to change the form. And so anyway, the gang problem, the, 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 the Crips basically emerged in like 1969, 1970. Um, and like it was put in the movie, documentary, it was pretty much the result of the Black Panther movie, the, back, the Black Panther Party, rather, being dismantled and neutralized by the government. And another thing that needs to be uh, touched on is that the Black Panther Party pretty much emerged because of the effort and the sacrifices of our Imam al Haji Malik al Shabbat, Malcolm X. May Allah be merciful to him. And so the point of the matter is this is that. Prior to the, to the Crips emerging, right, there were gangs, but the level of violence, black and black violence, was, 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 was not at the level that it was when the, when, the, when the Crips and the blood started to do what they were doing. 
And the reason being because in the 60s there was a period of consciousness. You had examples like Al Prentice Bunchy Carter, who was a former gang member, but went to prison and became politicized and came back and politicized and changed his community. But you know what? He was assassinated in 1969. Along with others like Fred Hampton in Chicago. So the point is this, if we really want to, 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 to really get to the root of this issue and really give it its right and deal with it, we have to understand what is systematically happening in African American communities. Basically all this is a result of we don't speak about the African American community. There's no leadership. And I want to, you know, kind of share some, some, some I'll uh, put it in the Islamic context. You know, a loss in the crime that old mankind, very we've created you from a single male and female made you into nations and tribes. And rather the most noble of you in the sight of Allah, those who, who, who are God conscious, fell off. Citing that verse to say this, when we talk about gangs, it's natural for human beings to group up for survival and things like that to accomplish their collective aims and purposes. But when we have a people that, 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 that have no knowledge of self, that gang starts to do or, or, or do self-destructive things. Gang is just what? A group of people. Is Skull and Bones a gang? These are fraternal organizations, but the status quo, these are, these are, these are acceptable. But we talk about the Bloods and Crips, because of the, the, the baggage that comes along with that, yes, it's, it's destructive or it's negative activity. But why is that the case? And it's not about pointing the finger, but we need to accept the reality of the situation. We talk about oppression and the struggle, what's going on in this country and the world, really, right? My position is that ain't nothing going to change or it's not going to, you know, no real change in this country or the world until this country, this government, accepts the reality that they have to make amends for the sin and the crime of slavery against the African people in the Western Hemisphere. And, you know, I want to say as well, it's, 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 it's a blessing that you all put this forum on, and I really appreciate, you know, your brothers and sisters for your efforts. But the reality of what's going on in this, in this country, what's been going on, the documented the proof and all that, is that there's been a struggle from day one with the African, the descendants of Africans in the Western Hemisphere has been a denied, has been an injustice, been a, a struggle that's been denied. And it's continued to be denied. This book I have right here is called African Muslims in Antebellum America. I carry it when I have, you know, come to places like this because basically this tells the case of the Africans who were, who were enslaved in the Western Hemisphere, who were Muslims. Because I say Muslims because the Muslim people of African origin are the only group as far as Africans that were enslaved that have documented evidence that a crime took place. That a crime took place. We have Arabic manuscripts that was written by Muslims, Qurans, things like that, a proof of a form of culture. So the point is this, is that the descendants of these people now are, 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 are being called monster and bone and tone stone and stuff like that. Why is that? Because these people weren't allowed to transmit their culture. Remember that reading and writing was, was, was punishable with death. You know, the, the, the significant thing about al Haj Malik al-Shabaab, remember Allah Malcolm, is that another leader that was assassinated was that he brought international exposure to the struggle of African Americans in this country. And on top of that, he was a Muslim. And again, he sparked the Black Panther Party because really, Huey Newton and, 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 and Bobby Seale they were just following Malcolm's politics. You know, the way I see it, they just didn't have a clear understanding of Islam, so they rolled Malcolm's politics. 
And the parent required basically birth from that. We need to understand these things. 